They say if you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. Frank Sinatra said it best. Well, coming up next, these two gentlemen try to prove who is the best of the two. Andre Durrell, the IBF interim super middleweight champion of the world. He defends his title in a rematch against Jose Luis, who's Scott DeGee. That is next here at Barclays Center. And who's Scott DeGee, I've just been told, has been cleared to fight. So likely, the fighters will make their way in the ring. And we will have action momentarily between Andre Durrell and Jose Luis Uscott Dickey. And you know what, when it comes to delays like that, I don't mind it, and I'll tell you why. Because it's about the safety of the fighters. These guys are dealing with a lot when it comes to weight cuts, when it comes to stress, when it comes to putting themselves in top, tip top shape to fight at this level. And I would rather have an athletic commission be overly cautious than under cautious and not so cautious because when these guys step inside the ropes their life is on the line so i'm glad that that is clarified with uscott the is okay the urine came back fine Darrell and uscott the is next here from barclay center We apologize for the brief delay. Our next fight will be coming into the ring shortly. We had a little pre-fight physical issue that has been resolved. The fighters are making their way to the ring shortly. Thank you for your patience. And the fans, Jimmy Lennon Jr. just got on the microphone and told the crowd what was going on if they didn't know so already. So pretty much exactly what we went ahead and informed the view of the audience, the, the viewing audience. So it is Darrell and Uscott Dickey. They will square off here at Barclays Center. And now the buzz starts to build once again. There is so much energy in the fans. And hey, check out Tom Brown. Tom Brown, the president of TGB Promotions. He's got a nice seat hanging out next to Denzel Washington. Tom Brown, who is the promoter for TGB Promotions, the president, also, master matchmaker, he has been and developed so many careers. Look at, you know, he's been a part of James Tony's career, Floyd Mayweather, Mike Tyson, the Ruelas brothers, you know, Robert Guerrero. Tom Brown knows the sport of boxing like the back of his hand and is truly one of the brilliant minds in all the boxing, Tom Brown of TGB Promotions. And now the fighters are getting ready to make their entrances. So we were delayed about 10, 15 minutes, but now that is what is on the docket. It is Andre Durrell, Jose Luis Uscott de Guy. Uscott de Guy, a seven year pro. He was disqualified against Andre Durrell by referee Bill Clancy for a, a deliberate shot, what was ruled a deliberate shot after the bell. So therefore the, the fight was awarded to Durrell. But Durrell's, his uncle, and trainer at the time, Leon Lawson III, stepped in the ring, was originally gonna congratulate Uscott Dickey and say no hard feelings, but then he sucker punched Uscott Dickey, which is why the sectioning bodies have banned him from the sport. So now Durrell is under the guidance of Virgil Hunter. Jose Luis who's got the game and here it comes he is smiling from ear to ear the man known as Poli Vita originally from Venezuela now living in Tijuana Park in California Mexico he's been in good spirits all week long he is without question a young man he said when it came to the first fight, he goes, look, I went home and I celebrated because I thought I won the fight conclusively. Now I'm gonna go out and I will not leave it in the hands of the judges or the referee. Here is Jose Luis Uscott de Guy, who has 
has dynamite in his hands. 79% knockout percentage to his credit. And he's jumping up and down. He gives a big sigh of relief. There you see him with one of his advisors, Sean Gibbons. And making his way to the ring, Andre Durrell. Durrell, a part of the 2004, he was a medalist in Athens. And he's coming out to the show goes on. Andre Durrell, his brother Anthony Durrell, was a former world champion. He's the interim IBF super middleweight champion. Most notable fights, May 23rd, 2015, a loss to James DeGale. He had a battle in which I thought he pulled off the win, dating back to October 17, 2009. That was in the Super Six for the WBC Super Middleweight title. He lost to Carl Frosch by split decision. But Darrell said, look, I learned a lot in that first fight. Virgil and I have been working together hand in hand. And now I'm ready to put my best foot forward. I thought I was coming on and giving Uskat to get some issues. And let's take a look at our tail of the tape here in Brooklyn. You see that Darrell is seven years older than Uskat Deke. They are identical in height, weight similar, but the reach advantage is squarely in the favor of Jose Luis Uscat Deke. Break down the rules. No three knockdown rule, no standing eight count. You cannot be saved by the bell in any round. The referee or the doctor can stop the fight. The fight is official after four rounds have been completed. So the stage is set for our co-main event. Andre Durrell, Jose Luis Uscat Deke. Will this be round one of the second fight or will this be round number 10? Round number nine. There you see Andre Durrell, really relaxed, composed. This is our co feature here at Barclays Center in Brooklyn. As we await to send it up to our ring announcer for the evening, here is the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and we welcome you to Barclays Center here in beautiful Brooklyn, New York, as Premier Boxing Champions presents another big night of action coming your way, and it's all brought to you by DeBella Entertainment, TGB Promotions, and Showtime, sponsored by Casa Noble Tequila, The Noble Pursuit, and Corona Extra, who invites you to find your beach. This interim title attraction is sanctioned by the IBF, the President Darrell Peoples, Supervisor Lou Pry Luker. Introducing our three judges scoring from ringside. From Pennsylvania, Bernard Bruni. From New York, Tony Paolillo. And also from New York, Robin Taylor. Introducing a third man to the ring, the referee in charge of the action, Ricky Gonzalez. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing in a rematch for the interim IBF Super Middleweight World Championship. Introducing to you first on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing burgundy trunks with multicolor trim, originally from El Vigia, Merida, Venezuela, now fighting out of Tijuana, Baja California in Mexico. He weighed in at already 166 pounds. His record 26 wins and two losses with 22 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the hard hitting IBF number three rank contender, introducing Jose Bolivita Uscategui. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red, white, and black trunks, fighting out of Boca Raton, Florida, by way of Flint, Michigan. He weighed in at 167 and three quarter pounds. His record stands at 26 wins, two losses, with 16 wins coming by way of knockout. 
But ladies and gentlemen, here is the 2004 U.S. Olympian, the longtime renowned contender, and the interim IBF super middleweight champion, introducing Andre Durrell. Once again, a referee in charge. Now to give instructions, Ricky Gonzalez. in charge, Ricky Gonzalez. This is our co-main event. 12 rounds for the interim IBF Super Middleweight Championship of the World. Andre Durrell, Jose Luis Scott Dickey rematching after the disqualification that occurred back on May 20th of last year. And they get it on here at Barclays Center. Durrell is a southpaw. He's wearing the red and the black, wearing the burgundy with the gold, and starting off strong immediately was Uscott Tiki. Uscott Tiki told me earlier in the week, I plan to end this in three or less. He said he will not be able to handle my power. Uscott Tiki looking for that opening. Durrell needs to establish his jab. Very slick boxer is Andre Durrell, his brother Anthony who was a former WBC Super Middleweight Champion of the World. He's sitting ringside. He's wondering to see how the relationship is going to play out with the new trainer, Durrell and Virgil Hunter. Who's got to key and Durrell, both in outstanding physical shape. That straight left. Using his jab is Durrell. Who's got to key looking to change his levels. A nice left hook underneath. A big shot though by Durrell. That backed up Uscott de Guy, clearly catching the attention of the man known as Bolivita. Durrell, no question, has a great deal of accuracy. If you're Uscott de Guy, he's had over 160 amateur fights, but in terms of the opposition, big right hand that snapped the head back of Durrell by Uscott de Guy. Midway point of the first. Left hook followed by a straight right hand, and Durrell seemed to be hurt. He put his left arm on the rope, not to keep himself upright, but it caught his attention. They're being more active here in the first round compared to that of their first fight. Corner who's got the key telling him to just don't follow him around, cut off the ring. A jab to the abdomen by Uscott Tiki under a minute remaining. Uscott Tiki trying to put his right foot, trying to get and cut off the ring, and left hook to the body, followed by a big right hand over the top. And Uscott Tiki applying the pressure early. With the exception of Durrell catching him with that counter shot, it has been Uscott Tiki who has been the aggressor. A straight left that connected, followed by another big shot by Uscott Tiki, or by Durrell. Ten seconds remaining here in the first. Round one. I got it, Sit down, Darrell. There's a stool. We're going to go into the corner of Andre Darrell, Virgil wow. Hunter in his corner, also Jacob Stitch Duran and Leon Lawson Sr. Look, 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 look. Yeah, I'm going to get it right here. I'm going to get it right here. I'm going to get it right here, Sid. Get it. I'm going to get it right here, Sid. We got some adjustments to make it all down far, okay? Good job. Don't worry about it. Okay? We just got some adjustments to make. Go ahead, Steve. He's fine. Mm -hmm. All right. Jose Cital and Randy Augustine in the corner of Jose Luis Uscategui. Check it out! 
Scott Dickey and Durrell look to both be fresh. Get the chair out, get the chair out. And Virgil Hunter talking to Andre Durrell as they need to go ahead and get that the stool out. I don't know what the delay was there. As soon as that Time in. whistle blows, you need to get yourself ready for competition. <laughs> if you're Durrell and Scott Dickey smiling because of uh, they were tied up momentarily. Durrell is a southpaw, Scott Dickey conventional. And Scott Dickey bringing the pressure again. Scott DeGee having lost to Matt Korberoff back on June 28, 2014. Since that time period, he had won five in a row before his loss. Big shot there before that disqualification to Andre Durrell last May. Durrell looks very sharp tonight, as does Scott DeGee. Scott DeGee looking to find his range, and he has the reach advantage. A big right hand, and Durrell again with his Left arm on the rope. I don't know if he's using that to keep himself upright or what, but I didn't think that was the case in the first round. Another big right hand, followed by some hooks now by Uscott Tiki. And Durrell staying in the pocket here. Using his jab. He knows he's got to deal with the power and a big right hand there by Uscott Tiki who backs off for a moment. Durrell misses with the jab. And a big right hand. It's like Uscott De is waiting for Durrell to throw a jab so that Uscott De can place that right hand down the middle. And a big right hand again. That backed up Durrell. And Durrell, you do not want to have your back against the ropes against this man. Scott Tiki, the younger fighter, a lot of power in his hands. 79% knockout percentage for Scott Tiki. And Durrell using that jab, but Scott Tiki has been, for the most part, getting the better of the exchanges here in the second round. They once again tie up almost like in a headlock. Was well, Uscott Dickey, referee in charge, Ricky Gonzalez separates them. A big right hand that connected by Uscott Dickey. Uscott Dickey sort of bending over, looking to find his range. Another right hand that was partially blocked, but again, and Durrell backed up. He was hesitant. He almost buckled another one. Uscott Dickey, his confidence is starting to show here as we approach the end of round two. And also in the house here tonight, two of the baddest men on the planet, Jamal Charlo, Jamel Charlo. Jamal Charlo is gonna be fighting Hugo Centeno Jr. on April 21st here at Barclays Center. He was supposed to be fighting tonight. Centeno suffered an injury, delaying it to April 21st. Jamel Charlo, he had success October 14th where he knocked out Erickson Lubin prior to that April 21st of last year. He finished off Charles Hadley, a big year for the WBC super welterweight champion of the world. And Jamal now campaigning at 160. That fight with Centeno, on April 21st, will be an eliminator fight. Back to Virgil Hunter talking with Andre Durrell. All right, we're gonna get this school better. This is chaos, so you just stay with me. Okay, grab the stool, sir. Let's go, get that chair out, let's go. Well, what stood out to me in the brief time that we listened was the, the word chaos. Virgil Hunter said we need to settle down this chaos, meaning Virgil doesn't like the rate in which Andre is absorbing punches and the pace that the fight is being fought at. That does not favor Andre Ward. And talking with Jose Cital, who's the trainer for Jose Luis Uscate, he goes, look, we are very confident. We know that we won the first fight and tonight we're gonna make it definitively and take that title back to Venezuela. And with everything that's been going on in the home country, that would mean so much. Using 
the jab is Thorell. But who's got Dickey, a big right hand again. He's been timing Darrell. Another right hand down the middle and Darrell retreats backwards. Darrell using his jab, however, that left eye is showing a little bit, no laceration, but it is showing some swelling a little bit. Another right hand that snuck through for Uscott Degui. But Darrell fighting in the center of the ring right now, and that certainly plays more towards his advantage. Just over the midway point, round three. But if you're Scott Dickey, you gotta throw. He needs to throw punches, he needs to let them come out. I know that Darrell will likely try to counter you, and is very sharp, but you've gotta let Darrell know that you're there and not allow Darrell to settle into the rhythm. If you're Darrell, this is the pace that you wanna fight, throwing the jab, using the ring, staying out of danger, making Scott Dickey contemplate and question himself. Nice left hook as Scott Dickey came forward. I don't know what happened there. A miss by Durrell. He threw it straight left and big left hook there that connected by Scott Dickey. The front feet got tangled is what transpired. Thought it was Durrell throwing straight left, but his front feet got tangled. Could not see that here from my vantage point, but. Thanks to our guys in the truck for providing clarity on that. And another straight left that connected by Durrell as he's got the key comes forward. So now this is more an Andre Durrell round. Is Durrell starting to settle in? Seems to be the proverbial thinking. As we near the end of round three. for Jose Uscott de Guy. A left 
took to the body, and I wonder if Muscat Dickey is going to go back to attacking the body of Durrell, especially with what we saw, the right hand that snaps the head back with Durrell. Durrell answers back with the triple jab. And Ricky Gonzalez warns about the clash of heads. Muscat Dickey is having a very good fourth round, largely in part to what he was able to do at the end of the third round. They want Uskat Tiki to throw the hooks to the body. A sneaky right hand that got through on the abdomen of Durrell. Durrell, 34 years of age, he knows he's got to make a big impression now. And Durrell with his back against him with this bad spot. Now, who's got to get teeing off? And Durrell was stationary. He was squared up for probably about two or three seconds. A big right hand that connected. Durrell showing a chin. Two big shots. And now Durrell moving, but he ate two big straight right hands from Jose Muscat to get his round four comes to a close. Scott Dickey really coming on. Let's take a look at some of the work by Jose Scott Dickey, the jab, bang. That right hand you saw was partially blocked, but it still got through the guard. And then another one, he brought it from wicked angles. He's sort of submarining it in, is Jose Scott Dickey. And Durrell trying to give an angle of the jab, and then look at Scott Dickey. Pick his spots. The jab comes for Durrell, bang. A sharp, short right hand. Let's take a look at the game. right there on the button by Uskat Tiki and Uskat Tiki really Move, picking up off, and Move. applying it and using more combinations. Round five, this one is scheduled for 12. Andre Durrell. Needs to continue and try to establish his jab because he has been, for the most part, followed around the ring and is getting lit up with big right hands. Another two straight right hands by Durrell. But Durrell, although he has buckled, he has not gone to the canvas. And Durrell needs to extend with that jab. He's got to frustrate who's got Dickey. For the most part, Durrell's best round was the third round with the exception of the end, the last five seconds. And who's got to be very deceptive when it comes to his angles. Durrell's trying to time him and figure him out and use that jab as a finder, as a range finder, but who's got to be is slipping in all the time, using the angles, using those slight feints, and it's those slight movements which are really giving Andre Durrell significant issues, and it allows for Scott Dickey to put Durrell and make him pay when he does throw those punches, or he throws something out there as a range finder, and then Scott Dickey will place that right hand over the top. Now Durrell advances forward. Not for cut that missed by Scott Dickey, halfway home of round five. This one's scheduled for 12. Some tough competition. He's been in there with James DeGale, Carl Frotch, and that was when Frotch was at his apex back in 2009. But Uscott Dickey jumping in with a couple of right hands, and now Uscott Dickey, if he's wise, he's now going to unload some punches. But Durrell comes forward, and Uscott Dickey allowed him to get off the hook. And now Durrell using movement to try to frustrate the 27 year old. This is the pace as Durrell's establishing that jab again. The styles make fights, and that's what makes this fight so compelling. The first fight was similar. The straight that was off balance was who's got the game. The punch did not land, the straight left for Durrell. And the jab connects for who's got the game. 
And back comes Durrell. Straight left, followed by a right hand. They both exchange there. And Scott Dickey. And Durrell pivots to get more to the center of the ring. And Scott Dickey allowed Durrell to get out of danger. As we near the end of round five. <laughs> Bronze Bomber, the heavyweight champion of the world, as he's shown on the big screen, the fans applauding and cheering Deontay Wilder, the Bronze Bomber. 32 years of age, making his seventh defense of his world championship here tonight against Luis King Kong Ortiz. Center is the home to tonight's Get event. The what mouth, kind of venue this has been? Dre, Dre, let's turn the fight around. In the corner, Leon Lawson, senior, telling Andre Durrell, let's turn the fight around. The round five was good for Durrell. We'll see what round six brings. Straight right hand from Scott Dickey, who starts off more offensive. Throwing more straight right hands. And Durrell establishing that jab. Scott Tiki, they want him to move his waist. They want him to use angles to get on the inside and use his reach as well. Right hand right to the midsection of Durrell. The left hook to the body by Scott Tiki. And Durrell has recovered well from that shot to the body at the end of the third. Scott Dickey cannot rest on his laurels. He has got to really apply the pressure. And now they want him to close the distance. Does the corner of Scott Dickey. Big straight right hand that found its mark for Scott Dickey, a left hook. And Scott Dickey applying the pressure and really bringing out heavy power punches. Straight left. And Scott Dickey. And Scott Dickey will step back half a step. And that gets Scott Dickey out of the way of the jab from Andre Durrell. Two right hands that snuck through by Scott Dickey. 80 seconds left, round six. And now Scott Dickey going on the looking to apply the pressure, but he needs the pin. Durrell against the ropes. And that is what he hasn't been doing. He's had opportunities to do so, but he's more willing. And now he went from conventional southpaw and he's switching up his stances as Scott Dickey under a minute left here in round six. <laughs> Ricky Gonzalez, referee, will pull him apart. Scott Dickey throwing more punches and a big straight left. It looked like Scott Dickey was off balance, but it certainly could be a combination of both. That was a big straight left by Durrell, followed by the fact that Scott Dickey was off balance. So it was the perfect storm for Andre Durrell. Now can he go ahead and try to steal this round? The jab right in the midsection. By Uscott Dickey. And Uscott Dickey is jumping in with shots, but a straight left to the body by Durrell to end the sixth. Stitch, stitch, just get him. Just get him, stitch. Doing good, bro. He's coming, bro. Andre. You got him, Andre. I'm 
telling you, if you let those shots go, you got him. Man, you guys give us a tough time tonight, man. You see I'm limited in this corner. Yeah, but you see I'm limited in this corner. Andre? So Virgil Hunter complaining to the Athletic Commission that he is limited in the corner to do his work. I don't know what they are pointing out, but I saw, I found it to be curious that Hunter wasn't in the corner, or wasn't in the ring instructing Andre Durrell. He was doing it from outside the ring. Round seven, scheduled for 12. Jose Uscatiki from Venezuela, now living in Mexico, who was disqualified in this first fight, in their first fight on May 20th, for a shot after the bell that was deemed deliberate, but he claims it was accidental. He was in the act of throwing the punch. This is the rematch here at Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Shots to the body by Uscott Tiki. Durrell shakes them off as the say, didn't hurt me. Durrell stepping in with that jab as Uscott Tiki tries to get out of range. A straight left and Durrell looking sharp now here in the seventh. Couple of hooks by Uscott Tiki, but Durrell during parts of this, the first half of the fight, showed signs of the old Andre Durrell. The, the spark quick, the technical, the technically superior Andre Durrell than what he was on most of his opponents. Can he once again find that fountain of youth at 34 years of age? Right hand that caught the jaw of Durrell by Scott Tegui. Minute 20 left here in the seventh. Scott Tiki, he isn't throwing anything substantial. He's allowing Andre Durrell to dictate the pace. This is the pace that Durrell wants to fight at. His tempo, his speed. And if you've got the key, he's just got to start to attack because Durrell is settling into a rhythm. He's coming forward to a shot behind the head, or as the head was down. Final 10 seconds of the seventh. Durrell having a very good round, followed by a left hook that caught Muscat Tegui. Round seven in the books. And now, we're gonna go to the locker room and check out a man who is hoping to become the first Cuban-born world champion in the heavyweight division, Luis King Kong Ortiz. 38 years of age, he says, this is his time. This is my moment. The public wanted it. I will go and dethrone Deontay Wilder here tonight at Barclays Center. Our main event next for the WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World. It's a very confident Luis King Kong Ortiz, as he should be in his abilities. Over 300 amateur fights on his dossier. Do not fear what's coming back. Okay? Dre! 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 And Virgil Hunter once again outside the ring. I don't know it. Do not have an explanation as to why that is the case. Round eight. Who's got the game starting off with hooks in abundance? Look at this. For four hooks, left hooks to start the eighth round. Straight right hand then for Who's got the keys. Uskatiki, a nice right hook, followed by a left. 
Uskatiki a straight right hand. They continue to urge Uskatiki to attack the body of Durrell. A left hook to the body there. And it backed up Durrell. Durrell going backwards. It looked like he was getting ready to take a knee. I thought he was getting ready to take a knee. Uskatiki with the hooks to the body. And now Bonivita applying the pressure on Durrell. Left hooks there by Uskatiki. Ward slipping. But Uskatiki's got just under two minutes to work. Uskatiki a left hook on the body. He is torching the body, is Uskatiki. But Durrell trying to answer back with an uppercut on the inside. Uskatiki, a big straight left hand. Uskatiki stays in the pocket. Another straight left hand. Andre Durrell has a heck of a chin. He's slipping and sliding, a left hook there, and he spins him around, and Uskatiki tells the referee, hit me behind the head. But Uskatiki's gotta go back on the offensive. Durrell has shown a heck of a chin. He took some shots to the body as well. What a left hook there by Durrell, and now he goes to conventional. A left hook. Two left hooks by Durrell. Under a minute remaining here in round eight. Durrell seems to have regathered himself and now he goes back to being a southpaw. A left hook by Uskatiki. Andre Durrell is one tough customer. And now Uskatiki thought he had Durrell against the ropes, doubling up on the jab as Uskatiki or was Durrell. Scott Tiki answer back to the straight right hand. 30 seconds left. This seems to be when Scott Tiki likes to do a lot of his work in the final 25 seconds of the round. Oh man, and that backed up Durrell, and again, he always seems to do damage here at the end of the round. And they asked Jose Satella, I overheard, because we are literally sitting right next to them. They go, why is he not attacking the body? And Satella... Do not call it off yet, Dre! 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 And the corner stopped. Look at me! I believe they are going to oh, stop God. this fight. Look at me. Do you want me to call it off? Yeah. I'll give you one more round. And I'm going to stop it if you don't fight in the round. One more, son. You're going to regret this day. You got to space this out to the ring. Turn it up. All right. Turn it up. Turn it up. Turn it up. You got one round. Now I'm going to stop it. I'm ready to stop it, Dre. Dre, look at that. And here is some of the work by Scott Tiki. Look at that left hook bang right on the chin of Durrell. And you heard there was conversation and they've stopped the fight. They have stopped the fight. Oh, no. <laughs> Andre Durrell, Virgil Hunter asked Durrell, he said, I'm gonna give you one more round. And the new champion is Jose Luis Uscatiqui, finally fulfilling his lifelong dream of becoming a world champion. What a moment by Uskatiki. But they asked Virgil Hunter, you heard him, he said, I'm gonna give you one more round. You better turn it up. You are going to regret this day. Look at the sign, the sportsmanship between Uskatiki and Durrell. Two class acts. But that is a very happy young man as he embraces with his family and he says, yes, I am a world champion. I have finally achieved my lifelong destiny. As Jose Uscatiqui is in a sense of adulation. That is a very happy young man is Jose Uscatiqui. And Uskatiki is without question smiling from ear to ear as he, Andre Durrell, 
elects not to come out for the ninth round. And the new IBF Super Middleweight Champion, the interim champion, is Jose Uscatiqui. What a moment for Uscatiqui after what he endured with the foul that was deemed deliberate to get the IBF to mandate the rematch and a finish off Andre Durrell or Brad Durrell not answer the bell. Saludo para todo el Vigía, Tijuana, San Diego. And there you see Sean Gibbons, who is part of the management of Jose Uscatiqui, and there is a very somber Andre Durrell. What a moment for Jose Uscatiqui. But again, they are two class acts. Let's listen into the Durrell corner here. If you don't fight in the ring, one more time. He's got a space inside the ring. Stop it if you don't fight. If you do not fight. That's what Virgil Hunter was telling him. And I remember, I recollect that Virgil Hunter was telling Andre, you're going to regret this. I'm going to give you one more round. And something occurred in between the time we left the corner. Time, time, time. And Andre. And the fight hey. was, they waved it off. There you see Jacob oh, stops oh, the oh, hand, oh, and then Durrell oh, says, I don't know why you stopped it. So there has to be some type of discord. Something had to have taken place, but it was getting to that point where Durrell was taking a ton of punishment. And now Durrell will leave the ring visibly upset, but it was starting to get to that point. And Virgil Hunter is all about the safety of his fighters. And he told Andre, I'm going to give you one more round. You're going to regret this. Give me what you have. You are going to regret this, son, for the rest of your life. Well, thankfully, Durrell is walking out of his own power. But Scott DeGee is the new champion and we will send it up to ring announcer Jimmy Lennon Jr. who has the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of two seconds in round number nine. Our referee in charge, Ricky Gonzalez, stops a contest upon request of the corner. He is the winner by way of technical knockout. He is still under, well, excuse me, he is now the interim IBF super middleweight champion, Jose Bolivita. And there you see Jose Luis Uscatequi, the new IBF interim super middleweight champion in the world. The regular belt holder, Caleb Truex. Wondering to see what is going to be in the plans for him next, but hopefully those two gentlemen will be on a collision course. Uscatequi with the win and taking home the world championship to his home country of Venezuela. So now we're going to go back and take a look at some of the, as there you see, Jose Luis Uscatequi enjoying the moment, soaking it up. Look, Andre Durrell, no harm in going ahead and not continuing, especially when you felt your health was in danger, but when you do not have as much heart as you would like, or when things are not just going in your favor, and you're like, you know what, I question myself as to whether or not I, can, I should continue in the fight, and that was the best decision. I will never question, nor should we ever question it, any fighter's ability, if they do not want to continue, that's on them because it is their lives on the line. 
And that was a very big decision for Durrell. He felt it was best for that to happen. But this man now has his moment in the sun at 27 years of age, as he is now the IBF interim super middleweight champion of the world. And coming up next, the bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder. He puts his WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World on the line against Luis King Kong Ortiz. Both fighters are undefeated. And, and now let's take a look back at when Deontay Wilder fought Gerald Washington just over a year ago in Birmingham, Alabama. This is round five. As you see, Washington was fighting some, he was fighting his rhythm to a point in that matchup. But Deontay Wilder so destructive and can end the fight at any one moment. He is a lethal puncher. 97% knockout percentage. As you see that Washington, and there's that big right hand, and down goes Washington. He hit the deck immediately. And look at that, Wilder knew that he had Washington in dire straits. And look at Washington, his eyes are like, oh my goodness, I've been hit by a rocket. And look at Wilder, come forward, bang, applying the pressure, big right hands, followed by left hook. And look at this assault by Deontay Wilder. This is how he closed the show, a big left hook that rocked Washington, and that is how Deontay Wilder finished off Gerald Washington at the Legacy Arena in Birmingham, Alabama. And the fans in his home state of Alabama, smiling from ear to ear. They love what they saw out of Deontay Wilder that very evening. And let's take a look at how Deontay finished off Gerald Washington. And man, oh man, when we say that Deontay Wilder is a bad man, we mean that with every sense of the word. Let's take a look at how he went ahead and finished off. And it's the jab followed by that big right hand and that sent Washington crush into the canvas. It was the jab bank, that right hand followed by the left hook. And the left hook was just because of the accumulation of punches. It was the jab followed by, look at that laser straight right hand. That right hand is a lethal punch. As you take a look at it, there's the hook that sent Washington to the canvas, but it was it all started because of the jab, and right behind the jab was that street right hand. And Wilder there before his adoring hometown fans made them go home with a smile that night. He's undefeated, 39-0, looking for his 40th professional victory. And coming up, and let's take a look back. The last time we were here at Barclays Center for a Deontay Wilder fight, we're gonna go back to November 4th of last year, where he finished off Burmain's to Burn. At the time, to Burn was the only guy, and it's still to this day, to Burn's the only guy to go the distance with Deontay Wilder, but he didn't go the distance this time. And look at Wilder pounding his chest. Looks over at Stavern, big right hand, bang, crushing the canvas. Goes Berman Stavern. And Stavern shaking his head, but you know that he felt that power by Deontay Wilder. And look at Wilder with his hands by his side. This is theatrical life. You can't make this up. Another big right hand sending Stavern to the canvas for the second time. And Stavern up, and he's gotta be questioning himself like, man, oh man, how long do I have to last with this guy? And Wilder was talking to the crowd, look at this, look at that movement. And boom, crumples over Stavern, and Arthur Mercanti Jr. literally has to get every bit of weight on, and look at, Stavern face plant. That was a delayed reaction. He was like almost like an accordion backwards. And then he face planted. 
That is how dangerous Deontay Wilder is. And he goes over to Don House, the trainer of Berman's to Burn, showing a sign of respect. Deontay Wilder is a class act. They go ahead and show a sign of respect. But man, oh man, is he one of the most dangerous power punches we have seen in quite some time in the sport of boxing. As we get closer to the main event here at Barclays Center. And we'll take a look back at some of the destruction from the fight with Berman Stavern. And here we go, there you see the jab, that right hand, this is the first knock, bang, on the chin. You have no choice but to fall. No man so far has been able to withstand that laser straight right hand. You see the reaction by Stavert. Ladies and gentlemen, a special opportunity tonight. And look at this. His hands are by his side and then just coming in with the left hook. And look at this right hand. Boom! right and comes in and look at this boom it was like a club on the side of the head followed by the uppercut and a right hand and another hook and Arthur Mercanti look at the athleticism from Mercanti to literally go into the lion's den and jump on Deontay Wilder look at this my goodness and Deontay Wilder just Crumpled over. Look at Stavern. Look at his body. And Wilder, my goodness, the definition, the epitome of intensity. And look at Wilder on the turnbuckle, feeling every moment of it. And there you see Wilder with Mauricio Suleiman, the president of the WBC. This place is packed, by the way, Barclay Center. It is alive and well, my goodness. What a crowd here at Barclays. This place is ready to explode for the heavyweight championship of the world featuring Deontay Wilder and Burmain's De Verne. That is our feature bout of the evening coming up here at Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Don't forget to join us on social media. Use the hashtag Wilder or T-Spallow's at Premier Boxing. Also at SBR Flores. Make sure to follow us on social media. And we have a busy year planned next week. We'll be in San Antonio, Texas for Mikey Garcia going after his fourth world title as he goes head to head against the champion at 140, Sergey Lipinets. Gonna be at the Freeman Coliseum in San Antonio. Looking forward to being there for that one. And let's take a look back. There you see Deontay Wilder getting ready. One of his training partners, Malik Scott, there as they put the mask on. The champion ready to go. He is certainly a showman. Is Deontay Wilder. The mask is on and expect a very entertaining entrance. And now they've gone and put on the hood on Deontay Wilder and the champ seems to be ready to go. Wilder's been a champion. He has been a world champion and has held the WBC heavyweight title since January 17th of 2015. His resume of defenses, Eric Molina, Johan Duopas, Arthur Spuka, Chris Areola, Gerald Washington, and Bermain Stavern. For Luis Ortiz, 
He has been a pro for over eight years. An extensive amateur career. Three Cuban fighters have fought. And there we see New York City glistening for what is going to be one of the biggest heavyweight fights here stateside in quite some time. Deontay Wilder with an 83 inch reach. Ortiz, and look at that, he's in the home of the Brooklyn Nets in their locker room. That is a menacing individual, is Deontay Wilder. Talk about intensity, talk about focus, talk about a man on a mission. Well, he's got to deal with a man on a mission in Luis Ortiz. Ortiz is joining the likes of Jorge Luis Gonzalez, Juan Carlos Gomez, and Orlander Solis as being the only Cubans who have fought for the heavyweight championship of the world. But Ortiz is looking to go ahead and defy the odds. He's looking to become the first Cuban world champion in the heavyweight division. This place is electric here at Barclays Center. Great to see the fans joining us here. It is going to be electric here at Barclays Center. There's probably 12 or 13,000 fans in attendance here. And I gotta tell you, as we get closer to the main event, don't blink. You have about a minute and a half, two minutes now. Get whatever beverage, whatever drink, whatever food you like, and get it now because during this main event, it could end at any one moment. Look at the capacity crowd here at Barclays Center. A big fight in the Big Apple in Brooklyn. This wonderful facility of Barclays Center, which has been the home to 28 boxing events. The stars are out. Boomer Esiason, Denzel Washington, hanging out here, Rosie Perez. And the fans are no doubt ready to see this heavyweight championship affair here in Brooklyn. And wherever you're joining us around the world, thank you for either waking up with us, thank you for staying up late with us. Because, and I promise, you will not be disappointed because this has been a fight that the world has been waiting for. And then, on March 31st, you have Anthony Joshua putting his three titles on the line against Joseph Parker, also a champion. So we are going to get and get closer to clarity in the heavyweight division following the month of March. But first up, Deontay Wilder putting his WBC heavyweight championship of the world on the line against Luis King Kong Ortiz. I also want to thank everyone, all the guys that are working so hard in the truck to bring you tonight's event. They work so hard and certainly need to be given their due credit because without them, this would not be possible. This is going to be something special on a scale of one to 10. And I tweeted this out this morning. My level of excitement for this fight, it's at an 11 because both guys can punch. It's just, it's so different in terms of their styles. Wilder uses everything off the jab and then is so aggressive. Ortiz is a counter puncher, but when he has you hurt, he comes forward, but it, it, it's this calculated aggression with Ortiz. Ortiz's biggest win came over Brian Jennings back on December 19th, 2015. And now we'll get pre-fight pageantry started. We'll send it up to the ring announcer, the Hall of Famer, the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we are ready for the heavyweight championship of the world. Please welcome the boxers as they make their way to the ring. First, here is the challenger, number three ranked contender from Miami by way of Cuba, introducing Luis King Kong 
Ortiz. Luis King Kong Ortiz, 38 years of age, over 300 amateur fights. He can become the first Cuban to win the heavyweight championship of the world. He feels that this is his moment. He said, this is my time. I've had my fair share of ups and downs in my career, but I'm going to prove the naysayers wrong. The sports books in Las Vegas have Ortiz as a three and a half to one underdog. Ortiz doesn't pay attention to that. I've heard about the camp with Herman Casado that this is the best that Luis Ortiz has looked in camp. He is focused, he's determined, he's ready to go. He's known as King Kong. Well, can he conquer Deontay Wilder here tonight at Barclay Center? And now making his way to the ring, escorted by Brooklyn native and renowned recording artist Lil' Kim, here is the defending heavyweight champion of the world, the bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder! Let's go, let's go, let's go. And here is... Deontay Wilder. Let's see what's going on. Deontay Wilder. 
And now, let's take a look at the rules. No three knocks, no roll, no standing eight count. You cannot be saved by the bow in any round. The referee or the doctor can stop the fight, and the fight is official after four rounds have been completed. It's the heavyweight championship of the world on the line here in Brooklyn at Barclays Center. The electricity is at a fever pitch. And now we will turn it over once again to our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. for the introductions. We stepping in hot to this year. And they go like it. They gonna be spicy. And there you see Deontay Wilder. Relax. And now here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. Don't be a foolish with the fist. I'm crushing these bitches like it's a Wednesday. Skirt, skirt, that's what the race do. This side, why do Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to Barclay Center here in Brooklyn, New York as Premier Boxing Champions presents the featured bout of the evening brought to you by Debella Entertainment, TGB Promotions, and Showtime. Sponsored by Casa Noble Tequila, the Noble Pursuit, and Corona Extra, who invites you to find your beach. This bout is sanctioned by the WBC, the President Mauricio Suleiman, the Supervisor Sir Charles Giles, along with the New York State Athletic Commission. Introducing our judges scoring from ringside. From Connecticut, Glenn Feldman. From New York, Kevin Morgan. And also from New York, Carlos Ortiz Jr. And introducing our third man in the ring, our referee in charge, is David Fields. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance, and boxing fans joining us around the world, Live from Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York, it's showtime! <laughs> Introducing to you first, the challenger on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks with green trim, fighting out of Miami, Florida, by way of Camagay in Cuba. He weighed in at 241 and one quarter pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign to the ring with a record of 28 wins, no losses, two no decisions, and 24 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the challenger, the former interim title holder and the current WBC number three heavyweight in the world, tonight looking to become the first Cuban-born heavyweight world champion, introducing the undefeated Luis Go! King Kong Ortiz. And his opponent across the ring, the defending world champion, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the gold, green, and black trunks, and hailing from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. He weighed in at a trim and ready 214 and three quarter pounds. Here is the 2008 Olympic bronze medalist who has knocked out every opponent he has faced in the professional ranks. With a record of 39 wins, no losses, 38 big wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight he is making the seventh defense of his title. Please welcome the hard-hitting and undefeated WBC heavyweight champion of the world, known as the Bronze Bomber, introducing Deontay. Once again, a referee in charge, David Fields, now to give instructions. Oh. 
Okay, gentlemen, we scheduled about 12 rounds for the heavyweight championship. We're going over the rules in the dressing room. I expect you to obey my commands at all times. Most ball protects yourself at that time. Touch gloves, good luck. Deontay Wilder looking to make his seventh successful title defense. Standing in his way is his most difficult opponent, that man, Luis King Kong Ortiz who's trying to make history and become the first Cuban-born heavyweight to win the heavyweight championship of the world. But will Deontay Wilder get closer to what he hopes will be heavyweight unification? We're underway. Ortiz is a southpaw. Wilder conventional. Watch your feet, watch your feet. Wilder with the reach. Wilder looking to measure Ortiz with his jab. This fight was supposed to happen November 4th, but now it is occurring here in 2018. And look at the front feet as well because they are both, with Ortiz being a southpaw and Wilder being conventional, you think that with the veteran mindset of Ortiz, he may want to step or try to step on the foot of Wilder to try to gain some leverage, and Wilder looks at him and smiles. In the corner of Deontay Wilder, Brooklyn native, former world champion and Olympic gold medalist, Mark Breland. For Luis Ortiz, Herman Cotsedo, and they've said that they've had a wonderful camp, and that Ortiz is in the best shape of his life, even at 38 years of age. A shot to the abdomen by Luis Ortiz, and Ortiz looking to send that straight left. Wilder wants to prove those that are naysayers and finish off Luis Ortiz in grand fashion. Ortiz doesn't like that people have called him old, but he said it is his moment. Halfway home, round one. Stepping inside with that straight left is Ortiz. Wilder hasn't been throwing the jab out with as much frequency. He's probably worried about being countered by Luis Ortiz. One minute left. That jab comes up, but wait for that right hand by Deontay Wilder. It is an eraser. It has hurt many fighters. 97% knockout percentage for Wilder. Ortiz seems to be very relaxed in there. And he's trying to put, and he's trying to step on the foot of Wilder. Big straight left hand that connects there. Almost, it was partially a glancing blow by Ortiz. Wilder. Looking for his opening. Figure at the end of this round, Wilder may want to throw that right hand. He has done so in the past, especially at the tail end of rounds. The jab comes in, an exchange, and Wilder backs up. Round one in the books. Beautiful. Stay there. Not so much, you already see what he has. Everything good? I want you to go up and down. 
Round number two, there you see the lovely Samantha. Here joining us at Barclay Center. Round two, this one's scheduled for 12. I don't know if it'll go 12, but that is what the schedule of this heavyweight championship matchup is for. Wilder sending out that jab. And Mark really was telling him, I want more of the jab. I want a stiff jab. That's what was not present in round one for Deontay Wilder. He's using it now as a range finder and pointing away is Ortiz. Wilder needs to extend that jab and get full leverage behind it. There we see Wilder unleashing that jab. Ortiz trying to cut off the ring. Wilder was thinking about Lennon throwing that right hand, but he pulled back. Difference of over 25 pounds, Wilder weighed in. And a big straight left, but that was a trip. That was a trip, he fell. That was not a punch. 214, that was a trip by Luis Ortiz, and now Wilder goes back with the offensive, and Ortiz retaliates with a straight left. Wilder thought he had Ortiz hurt, but three. Ortiz quickly answered that. Just over the midway point of round two. Sends out that jab, but partially blocked, and Ortiz has done a very good job of parrying away, of blocking that jab from getting through, as Wilder's sort of throwing it out there lazily. Now he backs up, he's so athletic as Deontay Wilder, trying to settle into rhythm, but Ortiz, this is in terms of the tempo that he wants to fight at. And a straight left, partially glancing shot on the body of Wilder. Technical as Luis Ortiz. A straight left to the body of Deontay Wilder. And Ortiz, I think we're seeing that the game plan is to take away the legs and the athleticism of Wilder. And it is attacking the body of the 32-year-old from Tuscaloosa, Alabama.
Luis Ortiz. I wonder if he's going to go back to that body attack. He did target the body, and there is that straight left hand on the abdomen of Wilder. A man known as King Kong looking to wreak havoc upon Deontay Wilder and hand him his first defeat. Wilder, he's looking to give the first blemish to Luis Ortiz, straight left for Ortiz. Ortiz now bouncing around. Wilder still hasn't been able to find a home for that jab. When he throws it out, Ortiz is in proper position. There's the jab to the stomach of Ortiz. 80 seconds left, round three. sort of throwing out those jams lazily, but not connecting. Wilder well, looking to land that straight right hand that has catapulted him to six successful title defenses. Jab. Ortiz looking to come on the inside, but anytime Ortiz steps it up, Wilder goes backwards, and now he's looking to come forward is Wilder. A straight left that misses by Ortiz. Very difficult rounds to score if you're the judges. Wilder threw a straight right hand, but way out of the way was Luis Ortiz. You need to keep occupied. There you see Ortiz's daughter, and she's saying, Poppy, come on, Poppy. That's what, in Spanish, Poppy is dad. It's Papa. The lovely daughter of Luis Ortiz. Ringside here, hoping to see her father make history and become the first. Cuban-born fighter to become a heavyweight world champion. Like I want you to go ahead, use both hands, go to the body, and then I want you to come upstairs. Start at the bottom, start at the body, and then come upstairs, finish up top. Round four, this one's scheduled for 12. Don't forget that Deontay Wilder started late against Gerald Washington. The end of the fight against Washington in the fifth round. So Wilder is no stranger to, he can start fast, he can also start late. It just all depends on the opponent. And also Wilder has had some issues when it comes to dealing with southpaws, especially a southpaw that has the background. A big right hand there by Deontay Wilder. With the amateur background and the experience of Luis Ortiz. And for Wilder, it did, and as we mentioned, it took him nine rounds to finish off Arthur Spuka, and he did that in spectacular fashion here at Barclay Center. That was in January of 2016, two years ago. And now Wilder, his confidence is starting to grow a little bit. You're starting to see him throw uh, more of a stiff jab, harder punches, sitting down on his shots. And for Ortiz, Will his conditioning come into play as we get towards the middle rounds? And Wilder pounds his chest as to say, come on, let's fight. Approaching 100 seconds here in the fourth. And Ortiz is coming forward, throwing that lazy jab out there, but he's not listening to his corner, Herman Cotsedo, about attacking the body and then coming upstairs. Wilder's trying to time Ortiz. And a big straight left hand there by Ortiz. He's looking to time Ortiz, but anytime Ortiz throws a jab, he brings that left hand right back up top to try to block the right hand. A big straight left hand, best punch of the 
the fight for Luis Ortiz on Wilder. Under a minute left here in the fourth. If you're Wilder, you want to stay away from the ropes because Ortiz has a ton of power, 80% knockout percentage. Ortiz looking to cut off the ring. Wilder going backwards, but he still has that laser straight right hand that if it lands clean, who knows what can happen. Straight left that lands for Ortiz. Followed by the jab, Ortiz gaining control around here as we approach the end of the four. Another big straight left hand by Ortiz. Wilder pushes them off from David Fields, separates them. 10 seconds remaining here in the fourth. That's the end of the fourth round. A left hook by Wilder to end the fourth round. Let's take a look at some of the work here from the fourth. There we see the jab followed by that big right hand, and Ortiz took it. I don't know of many people that have been able to take that, a punch of that nature from Deontay Wilder. And here we see the work from Luis Ortiz. Throws the jab, gets the attention of Wilder, and then there's that straight left right there on the head of Wilder. And there is the angle as Wilder was kind of going backwards, off balance. Round five. Check us out. Check us out. Here at Barclays Center, Luis Ortiz looks fresh. Well, so far, the age has not caught up to the man known as King Kong. Using the jab to the body is Ortiz. Wilder needs to find, and he connected with that straight right hand, and I wonder if that plays in his mind a little bit, because he landed it pretty clean, and Ortiz took it well. But well, Wilder's gotta be thinking, if I get him again, I could bring an end to the fight, because of the kind of destructive punching power that he has. Ray Flores ringside here at Barclays Center, Deontay Wilder looking to make his seventh successful title defense. Big right hand by Wilder, but Ortiz answers with the counter. And now Ortiz boxing on his toes, steps inside. Ortiz's confidence is starting to grow as the fight moves on. Now he steps inside with a jab to the body, followed by a straight left. And Ortiz is trying to bring the fight to Wilder. Wilder's gonna have to get Ortiz off of him. I wonder if Wilder is going to try to connect with the hook because there we see he threw the hook. It was one thing that they were working on in the open workouts because Ortiz, he'll throw that jab, he leaves himself open for a brief second. Wilder could counter with that left hook. But the jab hasn't been as abundant for Wilder and successful. And Ortiz throws a right hand, but it misses. 75 seconds left here in the fifth. Also, if you're Wilder, are you gonna be luring Ortiz in? You may be trying to lure Luis Ortiz in and then connect with that straight right hand. You'll even throw a hook in and throw in an uppercut, but that was blocked in route from Ortiz. in which Ortiz wants to fight. Coming in for a fight, but it's a shot there by Ortiz. And now the quarter of Ortiz is telling him, let your hands go. A big straight right hand by Wilder. And Wilder going on the offensive. Ortiz answers back. So much on the line. The heavyweight championship of the world. A big straight right hand.
Tranquilo. Put a towel around. Tranquilito, él va a salir como loco en este round, ¿ok? Ahí te descuidaste. Ok, tranquilito, te descuidaste, tranquilo. Mira, si vuelve a pasar, te me quedas abajo, arrodíllate, ¿ok? Espera el conteo, no te me pares tan rápido. Te organizas. Don't try to recover and let's take a look at the replay. Here is the knockdown. It was that straight right hand followed by another one. Two right hands and look at Wilder. The emotion. It's almost like he said, I finally got him. Look at it. Boom, right there, right on the nose. And then Wilder sees that he's hurt, that he's uneasy, and then boom! There is the right hand, crashing to the canvas was Luis Ortiz. And look at the daughter of Luis Ortiz, she can merely bear to watch. And Deontay Wilder is going to go, as he always tries to do, and that is finish him off. But Luis Ortiz is extremely calculated and is still powerful. But 97% knockout percentage for Wilder. Stepping inside with the jab is Ortiz. That is why Wilder is one of the most dangerous power punchers, if not the most powerful puncher in the game today. And Wilder cinching it up. He has it coiled. When is he going to strike with that straight right hand? It has put every full that Wilder has faced down. A big right hand, it won't with Ortiz. And Ortiz now is just fighting on pure guts, but now he's trying to throw a straight left. It looked like Ortiz was hurt, but he may have been off balance. Another straight right hand, and another two right hands from the heavyweight champion of the world, Deontay Wilder. Took Wilder some time to warm up against Spuka, against Washington, but when he gets going, he is so difficult to deal with inside that ring, which is why he's undefeated and making a seventh successful, or trying to make a seventh title defense here tonight. A left hook to the body by Wilder. Is opening, stepping inside with a straight left, partially blocked by Wilder. It was a big round for Wilder in the fifth with the knockdown. The corner of Ortiz urging him to please raise your hands. Do not get caught. A jab's coming. They both exchange jabs. Under a minute left here in the sixth. Ortiz to use the jab to close the distance. Because from this distance, this favors Wilder. As you can tell, he's thinking, looking for the opening. Advancing forward was Ortiz, but Wilder got out of the way of a straight left. Straight left that was partially blocked by Wilder. A left hook there, and another left hook by Wilder, followed by a right hand. Wilder has unbelievable power, but Ortiz, for the most part tonight, has shown a heck of a chin. Straight left that was blocked by Wilder. And they both are swinging for the fences to end the sixth. High level drama in New York City. Straight right hand, boom. And you saw that Ortiz took it well, followed by a left hook, and they both were just sort of swinging for the fences. And this is later on in the round with Ortiz stepping inside and Wilder. They both duck it down underneath and trying to land big hooks. You have to love how much these guys want to finish off the other. Round seven. Entering the second half of the fight here at Barclays Center. Ray Flores, 
Deontay Wilder, Luis Ortiz Wilder, the champion for over three years. Using the jab is Luis Ortiz. And he lands that jab. It's been working for him in spurts for the 38-year-old out of Cuba. Ortiz really reassert himself. He's got to go and try to land another big shot to gain the attention of Ortiz. Ortiz, he isn't throwing and isn't sitting down in his punches as much as he did in the first couple rounds. We're seeing more arm punches out of Luis Ortiz. I don't know if that is a sign that he's tired. Straight right hand that found its mark for Wilder. Took that missed for Wilder. Deontay Wilder says after this fight, I want to get closer to unification and I want the winner, Joshua and Parker. But first, he must pass the stern test of Luis Ortiz. 70 seconds remaining here in the seventh. A straight right hand. Again, that bound its mark for Wilder. Ortiz isn't doing much. But Wilder, looking for the opener, straight left that landed for Ortiz. If you're Wilder, you do not want to have your back against the ropes against this man. Straight right hand, down the middle of another one. They both land. Oh, and Ortiz, I think he has Wilder hurt.
shaking his head as to say no. I'm okay. He may be uneasy. All right, a left hook by Wilder. Wilder may be uneasy, but at the end of the day, he's a fighter. He's a, the world champion, and you have to take the title from him, and Luis Ortiz knows he has to do that, which is why he's pressing Wilder. A right hook to the body, followed by right hook upstairs. The corner of Ortiz urging him to come forward. Does Ortiz have enough left to close out Deontay Wilder? What a straight left that connects by Luis Ortiz.
Ortiz is getting the better of the exchanges. Wilder looked over at his left. I wonder for a brief second, taking his eyes off of Luis Ortiz. What a spectacle! He fought 
and dealt with adversity in his face. And he finished off Luis Ortiz. What a performance by Deontay Wilde. Deontay Wilder, still the champion. What a performance. I am absolutely speechless by what we just saw. When he needed to use his power, when he needed to go out and hurt a guy who was fighting at his best, he went out and did it. That is why Deontay Wilder is so lethal. That is why he's the hardest puncher in the sport today. Deontay Wilder, the bronze bomber, and Luis Ortiz, he fought the most dangerous heavyweight right now in the world, and he gave him fits. But Mark Breland and JDs, at no point did you hear nervousness. Did they panic? Wilder went out there, he knew he had him hurt, and he finished him. He is a finisher, is Deontay Wilder. And he did it in not just good fashion, not just great fashion, but that was spectacular fashion. We are a couple miles away from Broadway, and you couldn't have drawn that up. And look at this, the sign respect between the two, between Wilder and Ortiz. What a heavyweight championship fight that they delighted us with. What a moment. We will be talking about March 3rd, 2018, for years to come, as the moment that Deontay Wilder broke that ceiling, broke through that glass ceiling. This place is packed, and they were all packed into this building here at Barclays Center for that man, Deontay Wilder. He saw, he came, he had issues, but he conquered. judges had the fight 85 to 84 for Deontay Wilder at the time of the stoppage. Now that is against what the media had the fight scored at ringside. But again, it doesn't matter because Wilder is still the WBC heavyweight champion of the world. And again, you could have written a better plot if you were Deontay Wilder. And let's take a look at how all of this unfolded here. This is the first knockdown. You see Wilder steps in, boom! That right hand, followed by the left hook, and then another right hand. Look at the barrage of punches, and Ortiz immediately, and he looked over at his corner at that moment. He went down, and here is another one of the knockdowns. As Wilder steps inside, this is the first knockdown still. And Wilder, boom! That's what started it. Ortiz was hurt, the left hook, and then Wilder sent him down to the canvas with that right hook on the temple. And this is again, and look at that, boom, right there. You cannot stand up to that. And the left hook on the ear, and then going to the canvas with his knees was Luis Ortiz. Here is the second knockdown as Wilder measuring Ortiz. Boom! That right hand, it staggered Ortiz. Another right hand by Wilder. Those downward motion, big right hand, sledgehammer right hands, the uppercut. That's what crumpled over Ortiz and referee Dave Fields had seen enough. His knockout percentage will no doubt go up, but my goodness, this is the second knockdown once again. That big right hand, and look at Wilder, sees that Ortiz is hurt, coming down again, 
And look at this. He just saw and sensed blood in the water, and he attacked. But look at this uppercut. You are going to watch the uppercut right here. Boom! Nearly separated the head from the shoulders of Luis Ortiz. At that point, Dave Fields had no choice but to wave it off. Deontay Wilder, obviously very happy. He said he was going to do it. He went out and he fulfilled. And now here's Jimmy Lennon. We have time. Two minutes, five seconds in round number 10. Our referee in charge, David Fields, stops the contest. He is the winner by way of technical knockout. And still, the undefeated WBC heavyweight champion of the world, the Bronze Bomber, Deontay Wilder! And, well, what a night of action as I was taken back and looking at what transpired. Deontay Wilder tonight, as let's take a look back at the end of the fight. And here we see Wilder. He is the most dangerous finisher in the game. Ortiz hurt. Here the barrage of punches and then wait on the uppercut, the right uppercut. Boom! That was the punch that decapitated Luis Ortiz. And still, the WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Deontay Wilder. So tonight, Deontay Wilder was tested. He fought and dealt with adversity. He was hurt. He was very close to being put on the canvas for the first time in his career. And he did it in grand fashion. The same way Anthony Joshua did it against Vladimir Klitschko. Tonight, Deontay Wilder did it against Luis Ortiz. Wilder is a special fighter, and he's still in the prime of his career. Seven successful title defenses. Ortiz has nothing to be ashamed of, but tonight he fought the most dangerous finisher in boxing today, Deontay Wilder. Wilder, 40-0, with 38 knockouts. 39 knockouts, to his credit. On behalf of our entire staff, I'm Ray Flores saying so long, from Barclays Center, Deontay Wilder still the baddest man on the planet and still the WBC heavyweight champion of the world. Good night from Brooklyn. You know what he was trying to do? Make it like it's a moment. Yeah, yeah, no, that's what he said. Dead it, son. That's what he said. Dead it, man. That's what he said.